Hi, I'm Paul. And I'm Ming. Welcome to Skip the Rulebook, the show that maps the new world of the rules so you can settle your new game. Today we'll be founding a clan in Isle of Sky. In this game you take on the role of a clan chief, claiming new wild lands from the comfort of your ancestral castle. You'll need to carve out mountain ranges, tame oceans, and ensure a steady flow of whiskey. Scottish stereotypes beware. Let's skip the rulebook. Isle of Sky is a tile placement game in which you'll be building your own private island by placing square tokens that carry a range of thematic graphics. The aim of the game is to amass points by meeting a series of objectives that change with each playthrough. Shan't need this. Upon opening the box, the first thing you'll find is the scoreboard. This is used for keeping track of not only points, but also which victory conditions are in play that turn. Isle of Sky can be played with up to five players. Each player will receive a coloured player screen that will indicate which clan you're playing as that game. Each player will also be given a matching coloured scoring token to keep track of your points. There's also a black one of these that will be used as a round marker. Finally, each player will be given a coloured clan castle that will act as the starting point for your new kingdom. Next, you'll find a bag which contains these landscape tiles. The mainstay of the game revolves around the selecting and placing of these tiles in such a way as to gain your clan the most points. Unlike similar world building games, Isle of Sky implements an economy which determines the cost price of these tiles. The coin tokens are used by players to purchase new additions to their island. The discard markers are used to recycle pieces that you don't want. The final tokens which are shaped like doors are the victory conditions which are randomly chosen in each game. With the game out of the box, let's set up. Begin by placing the scoreboard in the centre of the play area where it can be seen by all players. The board is double sided so ensure that you place it face up with the appropriate number of players indicated by the number in the bottom left of the board. Next, take the pile of door shaped victory conditions. Shuffle these as best you can with cardboard and then randomly select four. Place these face up on the board in the matching spaces. Now we need to determine which clan we're going to play as. Each of the clans plays exactly the same as the others, so this is primarily an aesthetic choice. Once you've chosen your colour, take the clan screen which matches your colour, construct it and place it in front of you. Try and position it so that the other players cannot see past your screen. Then each player should take one of the discard tokens and place it behind their screen. Next, each player should take their clan castle matching their chosen colour and place it in front of their screen. Then each player should take their round wooden token matching their colour and place it on the zero mark of the score track. Lastly, take the black round token and place it on the leftmost bowl on the scoreboard, indicating the first round. If this is the first time you've opened your game, you'll need to put all of the landscape tiles into the bag, then give it a good shake to shuffle them. Place this bag to one side of the play area, ensuring that all players can reach it. Finally, take the pile of coins and place it next to the scoreboard. In a 2-4 to four player game, Isle of Sky is played out over 6 rounds. Each round is divided into 6 phases, income, drawing tiles, discarding tiles, buying tiles, building and finally scoring. First, you'll have to decide who is the starting player. In Isle of Sky, this should be the youngest and the prettiest player. This player should take the starting token. We'll begin our game with income. Each player will receive 5 gold for their initial castle tile. In the income phases of later rounds, once we've expanded our clan territory, each player will receive one additional gold for each whiskey barrel connected to their castle by a road. Once we've received income, we draw tiles. Each player should reach into the bag and draw three landscape tiles. These should then be placed face up in front of your player screen where all players can see them. These are the tiles that can be purchased and built during this round. 
Each player needs to decide which of their tiles is most valuable to them. There are two factors to consider. Firstly, any tile which carries a whiskey barrel, such as this one here, will generate additional income for you in future rounds, thus making it more valuable. The second factor to consider is the victory conditions. Look at the round marker on the scoreboard. Each little bowl or round marker carries a small tag. That tag indicates which of our four victory conditions we're aiming for this round, represented by a graphic. Since this is the first round, we're aiming for victory condition A. This means that we'll score one point for each cow or sheep that are adjacent to or on a farm. That means that this token, which contains both a sheep and a farm, is pretty valuable. However, this token isn't worth any points this round. Once you've decided which is the least valuable of your three tokens, secretly place your discard marker adjacent to that tile, but behind your screen, like so. Next, we will set the price of each of our two remaining tiles. In a moment, your opponent will get a chance to buy one of those tiles off you by spending their gold. To set the price, place a number of your coins behind your screen in line with the tile. This is the number of coins your opponent will have to pay in order to buy that tile off you. You must place at least one coin behind each of your two remaining tiles. Once you've both made your decisions, remove your player board simultaneously. Then discard the tiles that you've marked with your discard markers by placing them back into the bag. Beginning with the starting player and moving clockwise, each player then has the chance to buy exactly one tile from any other player. To do this, simply choose one of the tiles in front of that player and pay a number of coins equal to the number of coins on it. So for example, to buy this tile of Paul, I would need to pay him two coins. I then take the tile and place it next to my screen for now. If someone buys one of your tiles, you not only get the coins they paid for it, but you also get back any coins that you placed on that tile. This turn, I'm going to elect to buy this tile from Ming. Since it only has one coin on it, it's only going to cost me one gold. At the moment, I've only got twos. At any point during the game, you can break down coins into smaller denominations by swapping them with the bank. I then pay Ming one coin. If you decide not to buy a tile, or simply cannot afford the prices set by the other players, you must pass. Once all players have either bought a tile or passed, you receive back any tiles that are still remaining in front of you. Unfortunately, you do lose any gold you placed on that tile to the bank. While putting a large number of coins on a tile may protect it from being purchased by another player, this does mean losing a lot of gold to do so. Figuring out the value of a tile is one of the most important aspects of the game for this reason. The next phase is the building phase. Each player must add all of their new tiles to their clan territory by connecting them up to their existing island. For each tile you place, you must ensure that the train on its edge matches up with the tile you're connecting it to. So this tile could not be placed here because the mountains do not match up with the water. So it should instead be placed here. Each piece you place can be rotated in any way to make sure it's connected up legally. It's important to note when matching up the edges of pieces, you do not need to continue roads. Only the mountains, water and grass need to be correctly connected. If when you place a piece you create an area of grass, mountain or water that is fully enclosed, this is referred to as a completed area and is important for certain victory conditions. It also looks a bit neater. Once both players have placed their tiles, we then move on to scoring. Again, consult the victory conditions for the round. Since I have one cow adjacent to this farm, I gain one point. Ming, however, has one sheep on the same tile as a farm, as well as a cow adjacent to it, so she scores two. This ends the current round and the starting player moves clockwise. Each round in Isle of Scar will be played out by completing these six steps in the same way as during our first turn. There'll only really be two differences. Firstly, during the income phase, you'll receive one additional gold for each whiskey barrel connected to your clan castle by a road, such as this one in my clan territory. Secondly will be the victory conditions. At the start of each round, you should move the round marker to the right by one space. The next round will have a different victory condition label underneath it. 
In some rounds there'll even be two or three, so you'll be aiming to build different things during each round. Since you can see which victory conditions are coming up ahead of time, you can even plan ahead and build things that will be worth something in later rounds. Some of the graphics on the victory conditions can be a bit confusing at first, so if you're unsure of what they mean, consult the crib sheet on the back of the rulebook. The game continues until the end of round 6, or in a 5 player game the end of round 5. We then complete final scoring. Firstly, each player gains one additional point for each 5 coins in their possession. You may have also noticed that certain tiles carry scrolls. These are special victory conditions that are only applicable to the player that actually built the tile. These tiles are only scored during the final scoring phase. The scrolls indicate on them how you can gain bonus points. This one, for example, would allow me to gain one extra victory point for each farm in my territory. Again, if you're not sure what a symbol means, you can consult the crib sheet on page 5 of the rulebook. As an added bonus, if you manage to enclose a scroll inside a completed area, it's worth double points. Once the final tally is complete, the player with the highest score wins. The only mechanic we've not yet mentioned comes into play from the third round onwards and is a means of players coming back if they've fallen behind early on. You'll notice on the score tracker that certain bowls have gold coins next to them. From the third round onward during the income phase, players receive bonus coins for each player ahead of them on the scoring track. The number of coins you receive is indicated by the graphic. So for example, if you're playing a three player game and were last at the start of round three, you'd receive one additional coin for each player ahead of you, giving you a total of two. If you are still last, at the beginning of round four, you'd receive two additional coins for each player ahead of you, giving you a total of four additional coins that turn. Isle of Sky is a really interesting game once you've picked it up. The secret valuation of tiles will really force you to think ahead about how you intend to win, as well as second guessing the choices of other players. Once you've revealed the prices of your tiles and players start to purchase them, this can immediately see your plans crumble. This makes the game very dynamic as it forces you to think on your feet each turn if you're to get ahead. The only stumbling block you'll find as a new player is trying to decipher and remember the meaning of the pictures on the victory conditions. Make sure to keep the rulebook on hand for your first few playthroughs so you can reference the crib sheet. Once you've had a handful of games, you'll be able to play without it. Isle of Sky is a great gateway game if you have friends who are not regular tabletop gamers due to its reasonably simple mechanics combined with a good level of depth, which isn't too daunting. That's it from us at Skip the Rulebook. If you found this video useful, please hit like. If you want to hear more from Skip the Rulebook, hit subscribe. You can also find out more about us on Facebook, Twitter and SkipTheRulebook.com. Keep your eyes out for our Just Play video to watch us play Isle of Sky from start to finish with our friends. Join us next time for your chance to jump into that new board game without having to do any tedious rule reading. See you later. Diet, diet. Plans, you... Oh, that's not it. <laughs> what the hell are you doing? I got the roll. Show... They show the... This makes... This means that... Oh. Jaunty. <laughs>